I'm a blessed man in that, uh, first of all, I love my church. I lo- and I love those that aren't here today. You know, we, we're missing folk, and they said that pastor won't be there today. and uh, be praying for us. And we're working through some things in life and mainly dealing with what is, uh, what's been going on. But I'm a blessed man that my, my veterinarians come to church here. Amen. That blesses me because then I know, you know, I got somebody to take care of Coda as he gets older and, and they've helped me with my horses and things. But everything that God created has a purpose. Everything. And I know people say, well, your yeah, appendix ain't got a purpose. I disagree. If it's in my body, it got a purpose to it. It's got something to do. Everything God created, every plant God created has a purpose. Amen. Every, every animal God created has a purpose. Some of them have a purpose to be next to potatoes and gravy. Come on. Come on, Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. Everything got a purpose on this earth. Dogs have a purpose. Amen. I love my dogs. Now, the only thing I ever thought to myself that God wanted you to create that may not have a purpose is cats. But I'll, I'll leave that. I'll leave that at that because I always get in trouble when folk threaten to leave the church if I keep picking on cats and Chevys. Purpose. Remember, if a dog was the teacher, you would learn some things like this. When loved ones come home, always run to greet them. Never pass up the opportunity to go for a joy ride. That's a dog. I mean, my dog, if I open the door of my truck, he's trying to get in it. He wants a joy ride. He wants that head out the window, tongue wagging, and, and jaws are flopping. Hey, man, look like a Pentecostal preacher up there. A Baptist and a rabbi and a Pentecostal got together, and they started talking about the offerings at the church. And, and so they asked, the, 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 the Baptist said, well, how do you do it? He said, well, I take all the offerings that come in, and I lay a big old wash tub out there, and I throw it up in the air. And whatever falls outside the tub, well, that's mine, and whatever falls in the tub, that's God's. Well, the Catholic guy said, well, we do it a little bit different around here. He said, we bring in all the offering, and we throw it up in the air, and there's that wash tub. Whatever falls in the tub is, is mine, and whatever falls outside the tub is God's. And they looked over at the Pentecostal guy, and he said, well, we believe in miracles. We believe in a miracle serving and loving God. Amen. He said, I take that money, H, and I hold it up there, and I throw it up in there, and I tell God, God, whatever you want, you catch. Everything else falls to the ground is mine. Okay. I'm sorry, that just came to mind right then, so I thought I'd share it with you. Amen. A dog's purpose, never pass up the opportunity to go for a joy ride. Allow the experience of fresh air and the wind in your face to be pure ecstasy. Learn to take naps. Amen. This morning I went in to get my dog up. I'll go to sleep in the house. He's got his own bed, and he's in my man cave. And, and I go in, I open the door, and I looked at him this morning, and he's laying there. Every morning, every morning that dog gets up and goes outside. Not this morning. He just lifted his head, head, looked at me and said, it's early, Dad. And laid back down. I just left the door open so he could do what he wanted. Amen. Learn how to stretch before rising. Run, romp, and play daily. Thrive on attention. Let people touch you. Hallelujah. Avoid biting when a simple growl will do. Come on. Amen. On warm days, stop to lie on your back on the grass. On hot days, drink lots of water and lie under a shady tree. When you're happy, dance around and wag your entire body. Delight in the simple joy of a long walk. Be loyal. Never pretend to be something you're not. If what you want lies buried, dig until you find it. When someone is having a bad day, be silent. Sit close by and muzzle them gently. I've often said dogs are the most wonderful. Yeah, I can take my dog. I can lock him in the trunk of my car. I can take him down the road. Amen. And when I open that trunk, he'll jump out, lick me, love on me. He's so happy. I do my wife the same way. (laughs) Got your Bibles? Amen. Dogs are loyal. Can I get an amen? There's something about it. Before I get there, let me just say this to you. Well, as a matter of fact, let me read this, and it will back up. Okay, Cheryl? We'll do a little reverse. Are you comfortable? Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. When they had, this is talking about the early church. Then they had gladly received his word, were baptized, and the same day there was added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now, I've often said when God wants to send a revival, the church of the living God is not ready for it. 
I mean, you've got to get ready. 3,000 added. Now, we could probably handle a couple of hundred being added, but man, 3,000, that's an amazing thought. And they continued in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done at the, by the apostles, and, by, and all that believed were together and had all things common. And sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as everyone had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. I want to talk to you this morning about what makes a church grow. Amen. And there's a lot of different things that I found in this just one passage that makes a church grow. That helps. Listen, and we're not growing. We're in trouble. And I'm not just talking about the local church. I'm talking about the global church. Amen. Getting back to a place where we understand we need to grow. Amen. And we got to keep reaching out. And I know it's kind of hard right now because some people, they feel a little reluctant about coming to church uh, uh, and, and others. But I believe the body of Christ is still expanding. The kingdom of God has never stopped growing. It's still moving. 2,000 years, this thing keeps on moving from person to person. Amen. And people getting the word out. Father, thank you for the, the word of God. I ask you to anoint my lips to share your word, our hearts to hear and receive. It's so important our hearts to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. There are those that are going to pick up things out of this message that they may have heard before, but they never caught it. This morning, they'll catch it. Those online, they will catch it. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. The, the essentials of Christianity go like this. In other words, how did we start? What was the beginning? And, and how did that? First, it's its founder, the living, resurrected Jesus. Amen. The founder is Jesus himself. And this is important. I'm going to say some things that may sound offensive, particularly here in this January the 17th, because what has happened in, uh, is we have forgotten that God works on the areas. And I talked with Bishop Miller. He calls me right out of the blue this week. And uh, we're talking and I said, Bishop, one of the things that bothers me right now is that there are people that think that God only moves on an American timetable. That he looks at Americans and says, well, let me see what's going on in America, and I'll make this move. And then Americans, we think that whatever is going on in our life, God's got to jump to make sure of it. I mean, the rapture's got to come. Amen. Jesus got to be coming soon. This has got to happen. That's got to happen. Listen, God has never looked at America and said, let's see what America's doing for me to decide what I want to do in the world. Amen. So what's happened in our life is, is we become Americans first and, and Christians second. And I love being, an, I'm a patriot, I'm a, you know, I'm from Alabama, I'm, I'm a country boy, amen, I, I have principles in my life, I love Texas, amen, I, love to, I wish I'd have got here sooner, but, I, but as long as I've been here since the early 80s, I've stayed, amen, I like you folk, amen, evidently you like me just a little bit or you wouldn't be here. So here's what I'm realizing is, but many times we put our, our patriotism toward America before we do our love for Jesus, and so when things flip on us, we all of a sudden think God jumped out of our apple cart. Amen. And he never did that. Jesus found, if you want to see what God is doing, he will always look to the house. When God spoke to Solomon, he said, whenever there's plague, when there's a pestilence, look to the house. Amen. Not to the White House, but to the church house. Amen. And I want to tell you, there's going to come a time here in the next couple of years, we're going to look back on this moment, and we're going to realize that the panic of the pandemic has caused more problems in our economy than it did the death of those who died. We're going to look back on the panic of the pandemic and realize that we have had, uh, we closed churches and businesses over the panic of the the pandemic it has hurt us more than the virus itself amen oh yeah the virus is hurt i got friends right now in the hospital with the virus amen but they had something else besides it it was like something that added on it was a virus added on to it amen and as bad as it is and as insensitive at times we sound we're going to look back on this and realize that we panicked way too much over this thing amen we have shut businesses we have shut churches we have shut our lives down over the thought that this thing may take out one percent of a hundred percent of our nation it bothers me some oh i know y'all not gonna get loud on this because but and it bothers me that the politics hijacked this thing amen it bothers a lot of this thing is but we're gonna look back on it someday we can't see it clearly now right now it's foggy because we're, we're sentimental we hurt for others i understand that amen but we're gonna look back on it and say my goodness what were we thinking Amen. Uh, even even when I say politics hijacked this thing and ran it right into an election. Did y'all notice that? 
Amen. It's crazy as sound. So I get back to the founder. Amen. I got to get back to the beginning. The living, resurrected Jesus. Amen. He started this thing. Second, his goal was to change individuals' lives and to bring regeneration within their hearts. In other words, a new heart. November the 10th, 1979, that was me hanging out with two guys named Randy and Bubba. I look at this and I realize, you know what? God's goal was to change my life. He changed my life. Randy's life. Bubba's life. He changed our lives, man. He's changed many of your lives. That's his goal. He wants to change your life. Many of you say, well, my life is pretty good. It can get better. Amen. It can always be better. The neat thing is his method was salvation. This is not a political, educational, religious philosophy that affects a person from without, but an act of divine redemption. You know, my mouth was, I, my, I had a filthy mouth, which was connected to a dirty heart. Amen. My language shared what was in my heart. I've often said, as a man speaks, so is he. As he thinks, so is he. Amen. And what's in here going to come out of here? You can't help it. You will say stuff. And what God does, he comes into your life and he changed. That was one of the first things I realized, that God had changed my heart because my language has changed. Amen. It doesn't take a whole lot to say bad words. Amen. It doesn't show, take a whole lot to, to uh, let your vocabulary go in the gutter. But to learn how to speak properly. Amen. And to learn how to say, praise the Lord when you mash your thumb. Instead of, oh, whatever. Can I get an amen? Amen. So God came into our lives. His method was to save us, to turn us around, and to give us heaven as a home. His means of that was through discipleship. He uses committed, consecrated, dedicated believers to carry out his plan. Amen. Committed practitioners of the faith. And this is what's important. As we started this year, we started fasting last week. I preach to you that discipline ain't fun. It ain't fun. I pray you have fasted some this week, that you put aside some time, you've prayed more, you've, you've decided I'm not going to eat as much. I'm going to lay off the caffeine, the nicotine, the, the codeine. Amen. And other things in your life. Listen, we have become so addicted as a nation. Every, you, all you got to do is watch a little sports on TV and you realize how many drugs are out there. I have often said, I wish I could get a job naming drugs. I mean, they're the weirdest names. They're running out of vowels. To come up with drug names. And every drug, and if you listen, the side effects are worse than the cure. This is my problem again today. The side effects of this virus is worse than the cure. Amen. So you got to listen and pay attention to it. Amen. You know what the biggest thing is going on right now? You going to take the vaccine? Huh? You going to take the vaccine? You know what's in that vaccine? I really don't. I've had reports that there's some stuff in there. So I had a friend that took it, and I just told him, I said, listen, all I want to know is if you grow, start growing a third arm, will you give me a heads up? Because right now, I have no desire to take that thing. Amen. Not to say that you haven't, and I haven't taken vaccines before. I got scars on me from shots. You know, some of you, y'all got by with it, but us older generation, when they gave us shots, they left us in permanent uh, tattoo. Amen, or where they just shot us up, man. And I didn't get, nobody gave, asked my permission. Amen. So the church, as we just read in Acts chapter 2, amen, it grows warmer through fellowship. I love fellowship. We'll talk about that in a minute. Amen. It grows deeper through discipleship. It grows stronger through worship. It grows broader through ministry. Amen. And larger through evangelism. As you do your lift meetings and you do your swap meetings. And H, as you do the prayer meetings here on Tuesday night. David, as you meet with the youth this Tuesday night. Joseph had a tremendous retreat with, with, with about 10 teenagers this weekend. As we do these things, as we begin to broaden our ministries and, and do things in our life, you need to understand that fellowship makes things a lot warmer. I love fellowship. Fellowship. fellowship is two fellows in one ship going the same direction. Can I get an amen? That's a good definition. Verse 42 says, And they continued in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. They visited together around the table. There's nothing like gathering around one another's table. There's nothing like having fellowship with one another. When I talked to your brother yesterday, he said, uh, uh, I'm up here at Fajita Jack's. Come up here. And I said, that's 45, uh, almost an hour for me to get there. He said, we'll wait on you. I said, no, no, don't wait on me. I said, order some food, and I'll eat the leftovers. Hey, I'm your pastor, man. I, I just about eat anything, you know. And when I got there, there was cold bean soup and some fajitas. 
And I ate that as if I was a king. Amen. What a joy. When you ain't ate in a long time. That lady, get a little, little waitress, come up. She said, you want me to warm that up? I said, it's good. No, just fine, just like it is. Amen. But you know what was better? It wasn't the cold food. It was the warm fellowship. Fellowship, my friend, is such a one. And I pray this year as our church grows that you fellowship more. And if our church is to grow, you got to keep fellowshipping. When I hear of people coming out to the ranch and meeting up with the guys and, and folk out there, I just it blesses me because that's fellowship. I have no jealousy in that. That's a powerful thing to fellowship with one another. Second, they visit together in the church. Note there's power in gathering for the purpose of mingling. When we mingle, when, and this is the thing that bothers me the most about the virus is telling people, that don't get together, don't get together, don't get together. The early church got together. This church got to keep getting together. Amen. It doesn't mean you can't pray, take precautions, and you do you. Amen. I want you to do that. But on the flip side, I'm not going to let this, uh, uh, any, anything about society right now to shut me down from fellowship. Amen. I'm praying over people. Amen. I'm getting around folk. I'm, I'm not staying away from them. I'm going to the windows. I'm tapping on the windows. I'm waving at folk. I'm, if I can get in the hospital, I'm going to get in the hospital. Amen. Because one of the things about this virus, we're going to look back on it a couple of years from now and realize that people died without having their friends and family around them. And people are, are isolated so much now because of this virus. And we, we, when we sit and people are pushing them away, look, I'm healthy. Let me in there to touch them. Let me go in there and pray over them. Let me get back into this thing. Don't, don't just push us away from my family, my mom, my family. Uh, you know, people that I've loved in this, in this church, don't you do it. Then we're going to look back and realize that, we, that there was suicide through depression over this thing. And more people have died of it in certain cities than they have the virus. God help us. Amen. God help us. Uh, they visit together at each other's homes. Hospitality, enjoying having people in your home. Listen, and you need to write this last part down here. You're not functional until you're relational. Yeah, you can't function with me until, Carl, until I got to know you at the stable in the saddle, there was no function. But now I'm watching you at the door. Amen. Greeting with people. That's a powerful thing to me. Function, this is important. You're not functional until you're relational. You got to get relational. Amen. You got to stay connected. Uh, Charlie, y'all. Me too must have addressed you this morning because y'all kind of look alike. Amen. You're not functional until you're relational. Say it with me. You are not functional until you are relational. Amen. You've got to have relationship with one another. Amen. Until you have function. And second, churches grow through discipleship. And as we as believers are, are, are fasting and praying and becoming more like Christ, we're taking on the mantle of discipline. Amen. And to look after one another. When I talked with Bubba this week, all I thought about was the discipleship. He, he, I, I, I invited him to come preach. I wanted y'all to meet him. Amen. You need to hear somebody else with an Alabama accent other than me. And bubbles is thick. I might have to interpret for you. Amen. But he, here's a guy, I, and I listened to him, and he told me, he said, Jerry, he said, you forgot. He said, when you got born again, people showed up at your house with liquor. Instead of, going, instead of you going to church, they wanted you to go party with them. Amen. They told you that, that going to church is what they did on Sunday morning. You don't have to be so religious about it. Did you know I fell so in love with Jesus that I didn't want the liquor they brought? Did you know they set me up for dates with girls that I never could get a date with before? Hello? Amen. You're talking about temptation. Hallelujah. He said, I remember. And he's telling me this stuff. Bubba helped disciple me. Him and Randy went and bought these little silly games. I'm talking about, like, you know the game Sorry? Sorry I didn't have a date. No. Uh, sorry. Uh, we would play board games. I'm not a board game person. Ask my wife. I don't play cards. I don't play board games. But at this time, they were, I would sit there and play board games with these guys on, on a Friday night and a Saturday night. And all they were doing was sharing the word with me. Amen. We were big into what was known in as uh, the word movement. Uh, you know, Rayma and Kenneth Hagin and Copeland and all those guys. Man, we, just, we were just eating just whatever we could, man. We were just taking in the word and practicing with it. Amen. And then we'd start discipling others and getting others in discipleship is a powerful thing for you to bring somebody into your life 
You say, well, who could that be? It could be a family member. Amen. It could be a friend. It could be somebody that you talk with oftentimes on Facebook or Instagram or somewhere else. Amen. But to bring somebody and begin to share the word with. When you have these meetings, amen, they're all about discipleship. Amen. To help people disciple. It's important that both new believers and newcomers need to find their purpose in life. People blossom when they find their ministry. You don't understand what ministry is. Amen. But, but to minister to others, to be a blessing to others in some facet of life, you begin to find it. Discipleship, Christ relationship to his group of 12 men provides us a model. A disciple is more than a believer. It involves consecration and no one can produce a disciple who's not himself first a disciple. Like begots like. You know what I, I hear? Here I'm in the car with, with uh, Puppy. I call him Puppy. Puppy Ramirez. And he's got his, his brother with him, Sean. And Sean has had bouts of depression. And Sean has, flown, uh, has come in from New Mexico and hung out. Had the best week he's had. His dad sent me a message, Sergio, and said, Sean, this is Sean's best week he said of his life, just being around you guys and working. I'm thinking, what, what causes that? Fellowship. What does that bring? Discipleship. So here, puppy, amen. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking, uh, why did I get on puppy here? Oh, I know why. He's in my truck, and he's talking to a guy on the back seat in my truck. And, and I can hear him talking. And, I, and then the conversation goes, well, who do you, who do you work for? Because Josiah's trying to get some extra equipment. And the guy says, uh, 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 Josiah says, uh, Pastor Jerry Hovatter. He says, no way. It was Kevin Harden, fiddle player. Some of you may never have seen Kevin, but he's a wild child. I'll get him in here one day. Amen. But, but it was Kevin. He said, Pastor Jerry. So we get to talking. 20 years. I ain't talked to this guy in 20 years. Here's another, I've had 20, that's two 20-year conversations I've had this week. I can't wait to see it next week. Gonna happen. The issue became there is, is that Ramirez is a musical thing, uh, a person thing. <laughs> uh, but music begots music. So musicians attract to musicians. Athletes attract to athletes. Pregnant women find each other at Walmart. Amen. It's just the way it works. Amen. We begot what. So when you disciple, when you love Jesus, amen, you begin, it's easy for you to begin to disciple others. And so when Christ brought the 12 disciples together, they were just believers in the beginning, but he began to spend time and to pour into them, and they learned from him. Amen. He became their Lord. And we use that phrase too easy. Yeah, he's Lord. He's Lord of my life. Listen, guys, if he's not Lord of all, I said this last week, he's not Lord at all. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 says, Then he said to them all, speaking to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he's got to deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Sometimes it's easy on Sunday morning to pick up your cross. But you hit Monday morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning, it's a daily thing. Even I get up every morning and it's like drudgery to me because I walk in, I open open up this little medicine cabinet and I stare at it. I have one prescription drug that I take. One. I'll be 60 next month. I got one. But I take lots of vitamins. And it's like two of these, two of these, one of these, four of these. Oh, I got to add zinc now and vitamin D and lots of vitamin C. So I got five, six of these right here. Next thing I know, I got a handful of choco mule drugs in my every morning. I walk in and I stare at it. I go, dear God. Every morning I got to do this. It's daily. You know why? It keeps me going. It helps me out. I take a sign, something uh, to, to, for, for the wonderful uh, cedar and pollen in South Texas. There's, it costs to live here. <laughs> Let me just say it like that. But I do it. Amen. And that's what Jesus is saying. Every morning you get up, daily, you got to take your cross. You may not want to, but you got to get your shoulder under it, and you got to decide this day. And when I take up my cross, watch what this means. When Jesus was on the cross, he was not able to take his hand off and slap somebody to hit him. He wasn't able to take his foot and kick somebody that said something negative to him on Facebook. He wasn't able to do anything other than die on the cross. And when you take up your cross, you die to yourself. Amen. In other words, you tell self, self, you can't cuss like you used to. You can't gossip like you used to. You can't criticize like you used to. You can't eat like you used to. You can't drink like you used to. Water. Are you following me? So lordship meant taking up my cross and following him. Now, many are believers 
When I say believers, they, they seem to get away with a lot more stuff. That's why I'm saying that, that a lot of us are believers when we're born again because we're moving toward being like him. But to be like him means I got to die to myself. I got to say no to myself. So first, you got to deny yourself. Made at the deepest level of one's will to say no to something. To make him the ruling passion of your life. To take up his cross daily. What Jesus was saying, if you want to be my disciple, spiritually, you got to die to yourself. you got to prefer my will to yours. you got to give up what you want to do in this life. Allow to me, be, to allow me to become your focus. You know, a lot of times when, like when it comes into ministry, there's a lot of other things we could be doing. There's a lot of things that we could go out there and do. But we decided, God, I'm going to die to myself. And as believers, you got to do that. you got to start dying to yourself to be more like a disciple. Then Jesus didn't just say, deny me. Second, he said, take up your cross. And third, he said, follow me. Just don't pick it up. Some people can pick it up. But to walk with it, to walk with it daily, to follow Christ with your cross. Amen. Second Timothy 2.2. 2. Says, and the things Paul speaking here to his spiritual son Timothy, and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, and trust a reliable man who will also be qualified to teach others. Do you know how the church worked? It worked like this the church grew from discipleship, it went to Paul, Paul to Timothy, Timothy to faithful men to teach others. This is how the church grew. There was no social media. There was me telling you, you telling somebody else, and this thing began to grow. Amen. Me discipling you, you discipling somebody else, they're more reliable people. This is how the church grew. This is still the right way for it to grow. Amen. For us to share with one another and to see this thing expand and to grow out. The church is so important. Amen. I'm telling you, don't be offended with the things I say. I, I am an American. I thank God I'm an American. I didn't have to be. Amen. God put me here. Uh, you, don't, you don't get arrogant because you are an American. You, you get delighted and thankful because God put you here. You could have been born in any other place in the world. Amen. You, in, in a lot of places, to be honest, uh, it's full of poverty. You know, if you make $25,000 a year in America, you, you're somewhere around 80, uh, the 80% mark as far as uh, wealthy compared to the rest of the world. It's an amazing thought, and yet we compare ourselves to others here. Amen. So the church grew in discipleship. Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Wow, that's such a simple scripture. How's our light been lately? How's our light been through all the stuff that's been going on? Amen. Listen, light always, dark will never overcome light. Amen. Light, when you hit light, light exposes darkness. Amen. Darkness runs from it. Hallelujah. Light is such an important thing. So for you to be light in a world of so full of darkness. Amen. For you to understand, okay, now as a disciple, and listen, I ain't telling you can't eat what you can eat. I ain't telling you what you can drink. I'm not telling you how you can live. I'm not going to legislate you. Amen. I've never done that. I've never done it. I want you to read the Word of God. I want you to get with Jesus and ask Jesus how is it I should do, what I should eat, what I should drink, how I should live, amen, the things I should do in life. That's what's important, amen, for you to understand you are a free will being. And as a free will, you've got to decide how you're going to do it. But here's what I can tell you. When you restrict all the freedoms you got and you bring it down and you begin to funnel it, you begin to focus it, then all of a sudden that becomes power. I, I'm not a cowboy, but I have cowboyed. I've, been, I've cowboyed enough to get thrown off a horse to get put in a hospital. Until you can say that, I don't want to hear about you being a cowboy. you got to first get thrown off a horse. And then I have bruises. I've had a horse flip over on me backwards. Amen. Put, a, put the horn of the, of, the, of the saddle into my thigh and split my thigh. I had to go to the vet and get a shot. Amen. Because I'd go, rather go to the vet than to the doctor when I get hurt. Amen. But, but I remember laying there and crying and moaning. Uh, you know, I'm not much, but I can tell you this. When I could take a horse, like that Doc Bar horse of mine, and put a bridle on him and a tie down on him, and I could restrict his power, and I could put it and focus it, that horse could fly. Amen. And I could direct him where I wanted him to go. That's a powerful animal. Amen. To do a horse that way. In the Niagara Falls, my daughter was just up at Niagara. Amen. And you, when that Niagara, as wide as it is, does nobody any good. But when they begin to restrict that water flow, amen, of any great river, all of a sudden now you can start producing electricity and light. When a disciple of Christ begins to re take their power and say, you know what, I, I could... I could say it that way, or I could say it this way. I could live this way, amen. But if I begin to focus my life more on Jesus, 
And people would realize, I, I am a Jesus freak, but I also got some balance in my life. I understand life a little bit better. And I begin to focus my life a little bit more. And I'm not over here and over there and doing all these good boy clubs and good girl clubs. Amen. Everything about my life right now is about Jesus. And I begin to focus that. Amen. Now I have power. So when I pray for people, I believe for something to happen. I believe for miracles. Amen. Like the apostles did. I think that's what's important. Church grows stronger through worship. A while ago we were worshiping. Listen, worship has nothing to do with how many people are in this church. Amen. Worship has to do with who's in this church. Amen. And if you hear, you worship. Worship is an outward expression of an inward love. We enter God's presence. Amen. We enter His gates. When we come through them doors, amen, it's like understanding this book of Psalms has just come alive. We encounter God's presence. Amen. We sense Him. We experience His provision. Everything about God is in this house. Amen. So when I come in, I got to worship Him. The early church worshiped Him. They worshiped idols before. They were all into idolatry. They were worshiping little bitty gold or, or silver trinkets. Amen. The book of Acts tells us they worship the human body. They worship animals. They worship, but when they met Jesus, they found the, the, th the key, the, the, the void they had in here. All of a sudden, that fit right here. And worshiping Him changed everything in my life. Amen. I understood it was He that created me and not me myself. Amen. I didn't come from any kind of evolution or from any kind of philosophical nonsense that God created me. And in creating me, I found my Creator. And when you find your creator, all of a sudden you find out the whole purpose why you've been created. So you begin to worship. It's easy to worship one who's going to forgive you of your sins. I don't know anyone else that can do that. Amen. It's, it's receiving his word into my heart. Amen. It, it, and it changes my life. And now churches, and I'm going to start closing here with a few thoughts. Churches grow broader through ministry. I thank God you're sitting in here. But it means so much when I hear that you've been doing something with your ministry. And what I mean by that, every individual in here, when you go into your business, you pray over it. I don't care if it's in a, in a hospital. I was with a nurse yesterday, and I noticed nurse. She prays over her patients. Before she goes in, they, before they have surgery at MD Anderson, she prays over her patients. Amen. She prays over the doctors she works with. That's your ministry. Amen. Wherever you have, that's your ministry. If I'm going to sell a house, Hannah, I'm going to go and pray over that house. Amen. Lord, I ask you to bless this house. Let peace dwell in this house. When somebody walks in this house, Lord, don't let them think that, that, that the price is too high. Let them say, man, I, how could I not afford to live in a place so peaceful? Can you hear me? Amen. Praying over things. Going back, Susan, when you cut that hair of somebody, Lord, help me cut the hair, not the ears. Amen. You pray over them. You pray. That's your ministry. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, Jesus said, because He's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The Message Bible says it like this, God's Spirit's on me. He's chosen me. He's chosen me to preach the message of the good news to the poor. Amen. And this is God Himself talking. That the Spirit of the Lord had chose him. He chose you too. He sent me to announce pardon to prisoners. And recovery of sight to the blind. To set the burden and the battered free. To announce this is God's year to act. <laughs> Felt it coming. Mm, it's not devil. Came out right then. It's God's year to act. 2021. Don't take me serious please. On that point. The rest of it take me serious, but not on snot devils. I've said that before, and people think, did it really happen? Was that really? You do know that when people sneezed back in the old days, they said, God bless you, because they thought a, a devil went out of you, and they said that to keep it from coming back in. Therefore, every time I sneeze, I say, come out of there. Listen to it. Ministry is about reaching those that have been bankrupt, the poor. He said, let the poor hear the word of God. It changed their life. To those that are bound, he says to the oppressed, he said, he sent me to, to proclaim freedom to the prisoner. Man, if you've been addicted to anything, you need to say, I'm free. You need to proclaim it. I'm free. God freed me, man. Amen. I used to be bound up with that, but now I'm free. Amen. Proclaim it. Let folk know about it. Hallelujah. Nothing wrong with that. You're testifying about the grace and the mercies of God. Amen. To the bankrupt, the bound, the blind. 
the blind, the blind, the blind. There are people that are spiritually blind, but they hear well. Amen. You got, you got to reach toward them. Amen. You got, to, you got to do something for the blind. That's what brings their eyes open to the burdened and the battered. Ministry. There are a lot of people burdened and battered now. Everybody say, I'm, when I hear people say, I'm worried, what they're really saying is, I'm burdened. And I don't like the word worry because Jesus told us not to worry. Amen. Because worry can't add anything to your life. But I understand burdens. I have a burden for my children. I have a burden for this church. I have a burden for people. Amen. I have a burden for hurting people. This is about ministry. And churches grow broader through ministry. Last point. Churches grow larger through evangelism. The question that we all got to answer is this. Matthew 28, 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I'd encourage you, if you've not been baptized, be baptized. It's an answer to a good conscience. That's simply all that is. Amen. You're already saved. You're already going to heaven. But there's something about a baptism. It shows that the old is gone and the new has come. So if you've not been baptized, I'd encourage you. We'll fill the tub. Amen. This one here has warm water. God is not willing in any parish. He's not willing. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promises. Some understand slowness. He's patient with you, not wanting anyone to per perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I realize that God is constantly throwing the rope of mercy to people. Grab hold of this, man. Let me give you a second chance. Let me help you. You have to answer the question, are those who do not know Jesus lost? And if they're lost, do you believe that they're not going to make it to heaven? And when you start getting convinced of that, then you start understanding this message I've preached to you this morning, that it's important to disciple. It's important to share. It's important to reach out. I'll give you a little heads up. My brother and sister-in-law are flying in from Alabama to be here on Sunday, February the 7th, for my birthday. My brother. Do you know what means more to me than almost anything? Is my family. Just like yours. And to see my family talking about Jesus after all these years. To hear my sister-in-law giving God glory for all the good things that's happened in her life. And she's been through rough times because she's been married to my brother. For her to give God praise. For my brother to say, man, I'll come hang out with you, man. Amen. This means the world to me. Because first I want my family to make it to heaven. But I want my friends there too. You got to ask yourself, do you really believe? Well, Lord, if I just, if they ignorant, they, they don't know. So they'll, they, we'll let God sort that out. I can't take that chance. Not if I know them, I can't take that chance. I got to reach for them. Amen. I got to believe God for them. Well, Pastor, you know, quality is more important than quantity. Is it? Is it? Do you know how important quantity is? Well, you know, people, all they worry about the numbers in the church, the numbers. Did you know Jesus is concerned about numbers? What if you had two kids, amen, and they got lost? And you found one, and that was the real smart one. And so you gave up the search for the other one because you got quality back. Are you hearing me? Quantity matters. It's according to what it is you're counting. And we're counting souls. We're counting people. Amen. I'll let God deal with the quality part of it. But right now, I'm after people. Hallelujah. Shh, don't tell me numbers don't count. We are not functional until we're relational. Let me give you some PowerPoints here. Lordship, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. The church grew from discipleship. Paul to Timothy to reliable men to teach others. Worship is an outward expression of an inward love. The issue we must all settle are those who do not know Jesus going to heaven. It was the whole theme of the college I went to. You got to know. You got to reach for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, heads bowed, eyes closed. Let me just ask. I don't want you looking around. I don't want people embarrassed over this moment. But I also want you to know that if you don't know Jesus, God brought you here this morning so you can accept Him 
They start out as a believer, growing to be disciple, to be a Christian. If you've been backslid away from him, if you don't know him, put your hand up right now. I'm back down. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I proclaim I am free. I thank you for taking my life, using it for your glory. Wash away my past. Give me a future. Amen. You are my Lord and my Savior. And I understand today what that really means. I'll take up my cross daily and follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, come on, give God praise in here. If that's anything we can do, amen, anything in our bookstore, uh, any way we can help you, amen, we want to help you. If you need a Bible, you need some study material, we want to help you. You can go to holywild.net. There's all, Joseph's been taking my whole uh, a stable in the saddle, amen, and putting that down. It's been a painstaking thing for him to have to deal with. But he said he's on the whole course, so that it's going to go on the Internet. Is that correct, Joseph? Amen. So people can go there and study uh, the uh, stable and the saddle, the foundation courses of believers. And the pews in front of you are your offering envelopes. Amen. Don't, uh, don't shirk this. This is a part of discipleship. If God can get it, let me just say it like this. David Wilkerson, you ever heard of the cross and the switchblade? It's an old book, man. David Wilkerson was an evangelist that went to uh, New York City wearing a suit and tie. Ended up with a group of uh, gang leaders. I think they called the Mau Mouse. Amen. There was a guy named Nicky Cruz. Nicky Cruz was the leader of the group. And uh, they threatened to kill uh, David Wilkerson. It's an amazing story. There's a, I actually did a movie about it. And uh, Nicky got saved. David died a couple of years ago. And David made a statement that if a believer only understood how, many, how much money that God would put through them, if only they chose not to hold on to it, how much money God would put through them. And I, and I heard him say that, and, I, and my phrase has always been, if God can get it through you, he can get it to you. Amen. But first, he got to get it through you. The problem with a lot of believers is they're spiritually constipated, and they hold on to everything that gets to them. Amen. What's important is to learn how to let it flow. I, I can tell you this church has been a blessing. Amen. It is a blessing to this community. And I thank God for you. And I thank God for those who have been given online and those who have been given faithfully in this house. Amen. Because of that, we're able to keep on moving. I am not discouraged. I am not downtrodden. I, am not, I believe God that it won't be but just a little while we're going to start seeing folks start coming back up in this house. Amen. And I will be honest with you. Some folk are never going to return to this house. They're going to use the pandemic or other things. And it's okay. Not ev I learned this a long time ago. Not everybody that comes here is going to stay with you. Amen. And the truth of the matter is you couldn't if you wanted to. Because many of you are going to go to heaven before me, and I'm going to get to heaven before some of you. Amen. We're not always going to stay together. I miss Sam and Valerie. Amen. But I thank God they're in Woodville, Texas right now enjoying porch life. They deserve it. Amen. They retired, and we'll have somebody else pretty soon who's going to be moving here to help take care of some things here on the property. But I thank God for the people here. HD, I thank God for you, sir. Amen. That you got people lined up to open the church, close the church, secure the church. Amen. This is a valuable piece of property sets over here. We got to take care of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What's coming in the next couple of months? I got Eddie B. Some of you remember Eddie B. Amen. Tremendous singer. Fascinating guy. Pastor Rick Hawkins will be with us here in a couple of months. Amen. So we got other people coming in. They lined up. Amen. Sir? No, sir. I, I told him if he come here, I'd give him diaper money. 59-year-old just had his third child. The cross and the switchblade. Amen. I'm sure it's still out there. The cross and the switchblade. David, if you come up and release us here. Amen. Everybody got your envelope, uh, your tithing off an envelope. Amen. You got a, a meeting right after church, right? Amen. All right. Uh, today is the if ladies Bible study. Um, all the ladies, go see Miss Diane afterwards.
enjoy it. I know, uh, I think what Annie's preaching this week, right? I'll look at her, she's like, oh, I, I can guarantee you she has studied hard. I know Annie a little bit, and I promise you she is looking forward to today. Uh, <laughs> so you want to have a good time, you want to learn about some Jesus, and, and like Pastor said, fellowship, so, it's so part, it's so a part of what we do as a church. Uh, again, on Tuesday night, we're going to have prayer. Um, H, oh, he's, he's communicating with Pastor. They're going to have prayer. You want to say anything about prayer? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Pray. Uh, yeah, it's okay. That's why I yelled. <laughs> he's good. Uh huh. The cards are prayer requests. Okay, so. If you if you have something you need prayer for or you're believing for, man, our kids, our cousins, our moms, our dad. Pastor said we we got to reach out. The truth is we all know people that need Christ, and we may be the only ones that could ever get them to come. Not just to church, guys. It's not about coming to church. We want them to get there, but it's about them learning about Christ. What through our lives, through the things we do. That's why in pastor said Matthew 5.16 talks about by the things that I do, they will see and know and glorify my Father in heaven. Yeah, and, you know, they always say those who pray together stay together. You, you want to get connected to the house, start praying for the house. Start being a part of the And I promise you, it's going to be a lot harder to get disconnected. Amen. Uh, let them roots grow deep. Again, Tuesday night, we will be having youth at the same time. So if you have kids, come pray. Drop the kids off in the back. We're going to be hanging out with them, teaching them some, some about Jesus. Anything else? Am I missing it? I only had one thing up on here, so I'm trying to, you know, I want to make sure that if somebody needs something, Want something? All right. Amen. We done good this week. All right. I, and, and seriously, like Pastor said, continue to give. Continue to give into the kingdom. And when you do, it, look, it benefits the church, but it, it's for you. And I can't stress that enough. Me giving to the church. I work here, and I give here, and I go to church here. And the reason is, is because not only do I believe that this is good, fertile ground, so I've, I've said this my whole life because I, I learned the principle when I was very, very young. But a farmer never put seed into the ground and didn't expect something back in return, right? It's not like he's going out and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to put a bunch of seeds out here and if nothing ever grows, that's cool. No. Well, when we, when we give, it says that we're sowing. And so when you give, expect something back. Now, it's not always dollars. Okay, a, we like to give and get dollars. It's not always God. Sometimes it is the rebuking of the devourer. Sometimes it is I don't have to get sick. And sometimes it is I didn't have to go to the doctors. And sometimes it is my, my car didn't break down. But whatever it is, is, God is rebuking the devourer for your sake. He's going before you. And that's what we're looking for. Amen. And so I, can, I strongly encourage you to continue to give as a church. And not only that, when you do, you're going to see your life exalted in ways that you've never seen it before so today as we give we're believing god for jobs and better jobs more money less hours benefits sales and commission checks in the mail gifts and surprises fun and money bills paid off settlements inheritance rebates and returns debts demolished royalties received favor and success to the kingdom Bless these people as they go this week. Let them pick up their kids. And Lord, more importantly, let them to continue to be salt and light into this community that others might see and want what they got. And that is you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.